Good evening and welcome to Greenbrier Online's Wednesday Night Prayer Prompt. Back to school sales and tax-free weekends are in full swing, and even in the face of all the uncertainty of when our students will go back to school, parents are making preparations. And my family's not any different. We've already started buying all the things that you need to go back to high school and to college. Last weekend, we were looking at shoes, and I overheard a conversation between a mother and her little boy that was about five or six. Actually, everybody in the store probably overheard that conversation. You see, the young mother was trying to get the boy to try on a pair of shoes, and the little boy wasn't having it. He kept proclaiming, I don't need no shoes because my shoes help me run fast. And no matter how many different types of shoes, how many different colors, how many different brands this young mother showed the boy, he just repeated this mantra, I don't need no shoes because my shoes help me run fast. Finally, the mom looked at the little boy and said, you know what? I'm glad they help you run fast, but their slap wore out. And the only place these shoes are running when we get home is to the garbage. I kind of laughed. I mean, I've been in those situations before where we needed to buy new things for our boys and they weren't interested. Because every year it's new clothes, it's new shoes, new notebooks, new crayons. Because everything that we have in this life eventually wears out. That new truck that you drove off the lot, it doesn't run like it used to. It needs new brakes or a new transmission or a new driver's seat. That new smartphone that you just had to have, well, now it's become incredibly slow. And that new tablet or new computer has become so old, the operating system won't even update. That new jacket, the one that that looks so great in the store, Now it has a zipper that won't zip. That shirt has a button that is missing. Those pants, well, they have a hole. That new furniture, new freshly painted walls in your new house, your new installed carpet, your brand new dishwasher, all of that wears out with time. The sad truth is that's not the only thing that wears out. It seems that every day you and I are wearing out as well. Our bodies grow old, weak, tired, we can't run like we used to or lift like we used to. Even us, in essence, our bodies are decaying just like everything else in this world. Yet in the midst of all of this decay, we do have a bit of hope because there's something in this world that never wears out. In fact, it's the only thing in this life that has the capacity to be completely fresh and brand new every single day. Jeremiah writes in Lamentation chapter 3, 22 and 33, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Because of God's faithful and enduring love for us, every morning we are given new mercies. Every morning we're given the new mercy of forgiveness. And I know that we like to compare ourselves with our neighbors to see how well we're doing. If if we have a bigger house or a nicer car than our neighbors, we think we're more financially successful. If our children are better behaved or they make better grades, we think we must be better parents. But the harsh truth is that there was a time today when you fell short of the glory of God, just like you fell short yesterday, you fell short last week, and every day of your life. And if you compare yourself to me or to another broken, sinful person, well, that's pointless. Because there's not been a day in your life when you did not need God to pour out the mercy of forgiveness in your life. And because His love is amazing, every day God continues to pour out His grace in our lives. Every time we stumble, we don't need to try to run or to hide or to play the blame game and say somebody else caused us to do that. God's already taken care of the sin. Instead of rising to our own defense, we need to admit our weakness and rest in the blood of Christ that continually cleanses us from all of our sins. Because that's what John so beautifully teaches us in 1 John. He says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Every morning we're given the new mercy of guidance. Every day we come face to face with things that are too big for us to handle on our own, too deep for us to figure out in our own wisdom. And we not only need God to forgive us, 
We need God's guidance to figure out how can we live a life worthy of our calling. Peter reminds his writers that God's divine power has given us everything we need to experience life and reflect God's true nature through the knowledge of the one who called us by his glory and virtue. You know when you have those days when you feel like you're at the end of your rope? God's already given you everything you need to make it through. When you don't know how to handle a situation or how to deal with certain people, God has already provided everything you need to move forward with strength and love and compassion. God has already provided us with everything we need to experience real and abundant life. God has already given us the ability to face life with courage and hope. But to experience this mercy, we have to stop trying to live in our own strength and in our own power. And instead, we need to trust in the strength and the wisdom that God pours into our lives that allows us to be the example of Jesus in this fallen world, to model love in the model city. And every morning we're given the mercy of transformation. God didn't break through from heaven and give His life as a sacrifice so that we could be forgiven of our sins and left standing in the baptistry. That's the first step of a beautiful journey to becoming what God has created us to be, but that's not the end. Paul reminds us that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. God is intent on continuing the gift of refining our hearts And there are times when it's uncomfortable, times when it's painful, but it's done with our greater story in view. God is interested in us becoming what we were created to be. And every morning he provides that gift of transformation so that we can experience the joy of being his child. And that's not all. Every morning God provides the mercy of hope, the mercy of peace, the mercy of acceptance. Everything that we could need to live life in an abundant way, to have abundant life. And so tonight as we pray, I want us to take a moment to think about all of the ways that God has poured out His blessings in our lives. Because I know at times like we're experiencing now, it feels like we're living in a dry place, and we wonder, where is God in all of this? And we need to be reminded that just like Elijah met God in that gentle whisper, that's where God waits for us as well. So tonight, I want us to just take a moment to be still. And then I want us to take a moment to thank God for all the ways that He continues to renew us, to pour out those blessings that are new every morning, blessings and mercies that will never run out and never wear out. Will you join me in about five seconds of silence, and then let's go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy that is new every morning. Father, I'm thankful that you continue to love us regardless of what we have done or how far we fall from you, that you continue to call us to you. Lord, I pray tonight that we will understand, that we will come to a better understanding of what it is to experience your forgiveness. Father, that not only will we experience your forgiveness, we will share it with others. Lord, I pray that uh, tonight we will come to a better understanding of your guidance and that we will look to you to see what it is that that we should do in this life to, to experience all of the things that you have created us to experience and to be a part of all the things you've invited us to. And Father, I pray tonight that we will look for the transformation and that we will participate in that transformation even in the difficult parts, so that we will become more and more like Jesus in the way that we walk, in the way that we talk, in the way that we love this community. Father, I'm thankful that you have not given up on us. I'm thankful that as everything around us decays, that you continue to pour out your love and your mercy in our lives. Lord, I pray tonight that we will grow in our ability to love one another, And Father, I pray tonight that we will grow in our ability to love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our bodies, 
and with every ounce of our strength. Father, I pray that you will be glorified in all things and every way. And Lord, I ask this prayer through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, I love you. I hope you understand how much we miss you and how we long to be back together with you soon. But until then, I pray that you will experience the full joy of the mercies of God that are new every morning, that you will go in peace, and that you will live in love. Have a great night. God bless you.